your life matters i'm rupa and i'll be your host for today uh, today's topic is dealing with communication with parents as kids we ran to our parents for about just about everything uh, whether it was appreciation advice or whatever it was they were the you know they were the enter, entire world that we lived in so today uh, as i look back i see that there is a lot of disparity when it comes to uh, communicating with parents there is a lot of a communication gap it's not as easy as it used to be and so on the set today we have a special guest he is a pastor and a counselor with a passion for young people and i believe that it is his desire to see young people reach their full p- potential welcome reverend benjamin thank you uh, so i have listed out a couple of questions sure and we like your advice um today's uh, youth you know, we have issues and uh, life seems very fast now and we need people to talk to and preferably that would be our parents but parents don't seem to be listening how can we get their attention you said children have a lot of things to talk to their parents and the parents do not have time to listen and how can you get their attention now let me start with this thing if uh, as young people you have never got the attention of your parents while you're growing up you will never get the attention now so there needs to be a communication that is within the family right from the beginning there are various uh, many reasons why parents are not listening one parents are too busy they are working by the time they come back home it's about 8:30 9 and the mother is caught up in the cooking taking care of the children's studies and she is too clustered with too many things her mind is so occupied with too many things so no time to listen dad of course is so involved and preoccupied with his work he also doesn't have time to listen the second reason why parents do not listen i think it is because parents really do not have much information on the topic that you're talking about and that is why i tell parents you need to be educated and come to the level of what the children are trying to understand families we need to parents we need to move from the past come to the present understanding of what our children are talking about be it computers music whatever it is now i am not saying parents that we should have a knowledge of everything but i think we can make an effort to at least sit and listen to what they are saying the third reason i think parents are not willing to listen is because it is not related to the subject you know your studies your career if you talk about something else out of the career of your subjects your parents are not interested so i pers- how to get their attention very simple don't talk to them when they are walking to the office don't talk to them while they are busy doing something talk to them when you find each whether one of the parents available suppose you are driving with your dad in the car use the opportunity to talk to him if you are with a mother in the house use the opportunity once or twice she will turn you down the third time when you talk about the same topic i am sure your parents will listen if they do not listen there are other ways to get their attention he is to tell them that you are giving them time you have spent enough time trying to communicate and it hurts and i think it is there the parents will begin to sit pause and listen to what the children have to say pastor we also have the other extreme where um, parents would like to talk but sometimes they catch us off guard or at the wrong moments and um, you really don't want to talk at that time none of like none of the young people want to respond at that time so then what do they do yeah i think uh, we need to look at it that's a very valid question there are many parents who are longing to talk to the children mm-hmm. not just to understand the children but also that they will be understood mm-hmm. and as i said for the parents children are also too busy they don't the only sometimes they use a the house as a boarding and lodging mm-hmm. most of the time they are out of the house and i have seen parents going through tears mm-hmm. and i think that's where we need to talk about a relationship between parents and child and how to strengthen the relationship and how to be secure in that relationship otherwise what will happen your name is rupa right yes. yeah otherwise what will happen is we will develop a society without respecting and honoring one another mm-hmm. let me put it this way 
you will get out of the school you will get out of the teacher you will get out of the neighbor you will get out of the colleague you will get out of the trainer you will get out of the employer but you will never get out of the set of parents now i don't believe that god has made a mistake in giving you to the family or the parents to you so it is important for children to find out which is the best time for them to sit and talk to the parents it is important for us to notice few things in communication at home let me start by this the best way for us to bring back that communication in the house is to have at least one meal as a family and that one meal as a family is not to sit in front of the tv and have it but around the dining table find a time where the family members are there today what is happening is they sit around the family and all of them are looking into the television and here the time is lost for communication so i think it is important for us to find that one second every day communicate in small pieces mom how are you how are you dad how are you son how are you daughter how are you if there is no communication at all and you expect it to happen it will not happen i think it has to be a habit either the father should take it the mother should take it or find a family entertainment where the family can go out at least for one meal outside or one evening just to be with the family but of course young people are feeling a little embarrassed to go with their parents because we know parents can't think the way young people think but i've also known that a young people long to be with the parents because they are fun loving you see so we can't change the parents but i'm sure we can change our attitude towards parents you mentioned uh, parents can't think the way children think yeah and um, most often i've seen that there is uh, i think that's something that becomes like this it, it's like a boiling point where where you don't see eye to eye and uh, maybe the intentions are right you know the parents intentions are right but we turn around and it's it's an impulsive comment or a reply from us and then there's open warfare how do you avoid sirupa i always tell young people this remember one day you will be a parent and i tell the parents remember once upon a time you are a young person and i think you can as parents and as grandparents we can make a tremendous influence on the grandchildren but that is where family is a family family is not a palace a house is a house it's not a palace so in a family there will be confusion there will be tears there will be trials there will be triumph but together there is oneness so i believe yeah that's a place where there will be hurting but there's also a place where there's healing and family is the best place to experiment all this pastor kids today uh, would like to get more involved in other activities they like to go out they like to hang out with friends they like to do a lot more things but uh, there seems to be a hindrance in terms of uh, building trust with their parents to allow them to do these things how do we overcome i think parents want the children to be careful freedom within the boundaries is important freedom does not mean saying do whatever you want to do when you get into problem call me freedom is saying this is the boundary enjoy yourself within the boundary that is freedom but today what young people are talking about is don't question me don't ask me anything i have come to the age of uh, maturity i will do what i want to do is young people um, how do we find a balance between assertion and rebellion because see when you when you're trying to do these kind of activities you tend to want that freedom and sometimes you get it sometimes you're suppressed at times you rebel to get it so what is it what is that middle ground there which uh, would help us be more effective and do things rightly i tell young people don't rebel rebelliousness has always caused discomfort in relationships rebelliousness always caused rift in the family you can wait parents need not say yes to everything let me give you an example if a 2 year old son comes and asks me for a blade to sharpen the pencil i say no now sometimes when he turns around and ask why no very often parents say no means no now that is not an answer i think parents should take time to explain saying the danger of using a sharp object 
the same parent will give the child the blade when he's in the 12th standard. So there is a time for everything. I think young people need to know there is a time for everything. They cannot rebel and tell parents, you know, I will do what I want to do because I think God has given parents also the wisdom. We need to look at wisdom from different angles. One, people of maturity who are concerned about your welfare will always advise you rightly. Second, no parent will say yes or no to hurt you. They will look at the issues and then they'll tell you what is best and then give you permission. The third one is someone who really cares for you is the one who will have the courage to say no even if you put your foot down and say I want it. But remember, it should come from a heart of one who really cares for you and loves you. But people who please you will say, go and do everything. Giving you freedom to do everything is not love. But looking at the best thing in your life and looking at the pros and cons and restricting you and also granting you permission should come from the heart of one who really loves and cares. So I think that is where young people need to be patient and wait and also trust the parents' wisdom. But uh, you know, parenting is, doesn't come out of experience. No parents, I have not, never seen an advertisement here, giving you a child, please come with 25 years of parenting experience. Every time a parenting experience happens is only when the child is given in that family. So parents are not perfect, the child is not perfect, but I'm sure a God who has given this child to the parents and the parents to the child is a God who gives us a blueprint how to raise the children. Pastor, finally, what is your advice to parents when it comes to building bridges of communication? Well, I will not talk just about communication, but let me tell all the parents. Let me take this letter C-H-I-L-D. Look at your child as a, one who is given by God and not an accident. Which means... Every parent will respect the child and honor the child. I must acknowledge there are certain families, they have a special children, a special child. And a special child is given only to special parents. Then the letter H. Your home should not be a prison, it should be a palace. When I say palace, they should be respected and honored and not like a slave in the prison. The letter I... Your involvement in the life of a child should be a pleasure and not a pain. And I think in most of the parent-teachers meeting, it's the mothers who are sent. And I think it is important for the father also to be part of it and to enjoy what the child is doing, even if it is outside the studies. The letter L is love. The love should not be conditional, it should be unconditional. You cannot look at the child and say, because you are getting first rank, I love you. I think it should be the other way around. I love you so much, give your best. And I don't think children should be compared in the house. Each child is different. God does not give everybody an A-grade mentality. And so we need to look at a child special, unique, a child with emotions. But I also tell parents, the letter D, we need to discipline the child. And the discipline should be constructive and not destructive. Where you discipline the child so much, the child is scared to even do the right thing. So I would tell the parents, don't focus so much on communication. Just learn to love the child that God has given. There is no guarantee they will see the child tomorrow. Because my Bible says, my times are in your hands, O Lord. And I want to leave it with that note to, even to the children. I tell the children, treat your parents as if it's going to be the last day they ever going to be with you. And the parents, treat your child as if that's going to be the last day you're going to be with the child. Your world will change. Your home will be a better place for all of you to live. Thank you, Pastor, for that valuable insight. I found this to be a huge blessing and I hope you did too. 
until we meet again next time take care